What do you do when you find out your mother-in-law is a mistress? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, 16-year-old male, I don't like 42-year-old male dad's cooking, his attitude, 40-year-old female mom's apathy in the house, and her general deadness, what can I do? First off, my dad makes the worst food and he's the cook of the house. Every meal we eat rice, not rice at all since the thing is 80% millets with various beans plus grind it up practically food waste and not 1% of the rice is actual rice. By food waste, I mean things you would not eat like watermelon rinds, corn silk, kiwi skin, strawberry top, and grinded up bones of whatever meat main dish we're having. For example, if dad brought home watermelons, after cubing the inside out into containers, he'd wash the rinds, grind it up, and pour it into the rice cooker with all the millets and beans for it to be steamed together. The result is a horrifying mess of unappetizing color, weird watery texture that pops and brushes the weird way, and everything between sweet and sour. Millets are unappetizing enough on its own. The main dish is poisoned as well. Whatever meat or vegetable we're having roasted, stir-fried, or baked with food waste, Dad didn't rice cook. Also, no salt or pepper no matter what, so the thing is bland as it gets. I also sometimes get a side dish in the form of cold leftovers of yesterday, which is rare since dad goes out of his way to make sure there's no food waste. My parents never let me eat out on my own since they give their allowance through wire transfer, and dad gets really angry if he finds out I spent money on outside food. Also, withdrawal is locked. Plus, we never eat out unless we're on a trip away from home. Even then, if there is a stove at the hotel, we will always eat dinner inside, plus breakfast if the hotel breakfast is not included. The only time I get to avoid this cooking is lunch at school when dad and mom go out to work early and forget to pack me lunch. Then dad lets me eat whatever for lunch. Very rare since it happens only one to two times a month since dad would go out of his way to eat disgusting breakfast every day with the whole family no matter what. Secondly, when I confront my dad about his cooking, he gets really mad and his face goes all red, proceeds to yell about how this is healthy food, waste food and go to heck, it costs more than whatever I'm wanting, be grateful, and he makes the money so he decides whatever. The food is theoretically healthy, but dad is kind of obese, so I don't get him. He says working is a workout enough. I think it's because he's a dang pig who'd be fine eating bad food. He never usually eats outside food either, packs lunch all the time and never goes out for dinner unless it is a special, special occasion. He doesn't eat out on his birthday, so you see what I'm saying. We eat more than enough money to get this expensive dung, so why not just throw out the unappetizing parts and cook good food? When I said that, dad got even angrier talking about how he isn't going to let food he bought go to waste if he can help it and how he isn't going to listen to his son about where to spend his money. Also, something about family values where everyone must eat at the table at home with food made in the home, and how his cooking is perfectly fine. I can't starve since 1. I don't want to starve. 2. Skipping meals gets my dad really angry. 3. He talks about how he makes the money of the house, so he gets to make the decision slash he's the man of the house which is a lie or confusing since mom works at the same place my dad does and apparently she makes more money and has a much higher position than him. When I ask mom about it, she doesn't care at all. I'm pretty sure mom hates dad's cooking at least, but she never does say anything about it. She says dad is the man of the house, so I should respect where he spends the money. Unless he owns the house, I don't see how or why he is the man of the house, as said from the previous reasons. I asked her why she's with dad, and she just gives a textbook answer of, I love him, and that it is how it is, plus how it's always been. Apparently they've known each other since they were born, since my grandparents know each other. I bet he was just as controlling as he is now, back then. I don't see them getting a divorce, since I never even saw them fight and still do everything together. More of dad doing and mom not doing. Mom has no agency at all and goes with whatever dad says, so don't expect anything of her. She was always like this from the earliest memories of my life. Dad does everything and mom is just there. I tried asking dad if mom could cook, but he shot it down with how he doesn't trust mom to not waste money. By that, I think he meant food. Dad controls everything in the house. He chooses where mom's money gets spent and all the housework like homekeeping, tax, and childcare. He says that he's the man, so he's head of the house, and doesn't trust her to do anything. Mom just agrees like a corpse. Whenever dad does anything at home, she's always sitting near or next to him, staring at him while he does everything while she does nothing. Real creepy. As problematic as the relationship may seem, 
I really don't know how much OP can do here. I mean, they can continue trying to be outward about their opinions, but if both of the parents are totally on board and completely fine or complacent with things, it might just be a hold on until you can get out of there or hold on until you can provide for yourself type situation. Our next story is help quick. My traumatized mother wants to turn herself into the police for accidentally watching adult entertainment. It's not fake. My mother, 70 years old, doesn't understand how cell phones work. She even needs my help to set the alarm clock, but she likes to chat on WhatsApp and watch religious videos on the internet. And yesterday it looked like she was watching a recipe video and switched to watching an adult entertainment video. Now she's afraid the police will find out and arrest her. She wants to hand over her cell phone to the police. The context for this is because a coworker of hers was arrested for certain illegal materials in a very bizarre case. It seems they arrested him by mistake or something. There wasn't even a case in his name. I have no idea what to do since in two hours she's going to a place that's near the police and I'm scared that she'll actually do that. I already said it's not illegal so she shouldn't do it. Her sister did the same but she's scared. Someone give me an idea. Update. As the topic became a bit popular, I want to clarify something. The issue with my mother is not exactly that she watched adult entertainment, but rather that she believes she has it saved on her cell phone. When I was a teenager, she told me that she wanted to watch again films that, for what I understood, were soft adult entertainment. She didn't like watching this, but her fear is that the police will take her cell phone and find it. Since the story about her coworker being arrested for having child stuff on his computer existed in her reality. He was arrested in a huge national operation against child stuff, and she lived it like someone who didn't understand anything about technology. My mother heard her coworker saying that he was arrested because he watched a Brazilian TV host's adult entertainment film. Brazilians know what I'm talking about, but to explain, she's a TV host who became very famous in the 90s for her children's show, but before that she made a film in which she had a sex scene with a boy. She tried to bury this film, but that made everyone curious to watch it, and it's very famous in the Brazilian underworld. I've never watched it. And after he was released, reinforcing that he was innocent, I didn't want to follow what happened, but the story is quite bizarre. For example, the only proof that he was arrested was the TV footage of him being arrested. Moral of the story, really wait for someone to be convicted before you condemn them, as my mother has this image of a kind older lady, he shared a lot of things with her. He had the full predator treatment, and this added to her old fear that I had that kind of stuff on my computer, which is a fear she always had for some reason from me, an asexual woman who doesn't like children, and on top of that, famous for being a good girl without any vices, and we had several fights about it during my life, because someone could have put this on my computer since they had this idea forever. It made her have this irrational fear of anything pornographic on the internet and today she encountered that kind of content for the first time in her life out of nowhere. She arrived from the prayer group meeting and she didn't go to the police. She also didn't want to discuss it with me, but I discovered what probably happened. Since she started using the internet some years ago, I have taught her about the dangers of it, but she chooses to ignore it. My mother clicked on all the ads for miracle medicines to cure pain and wanted to buy all the things that these scammers try to sell to desperate old people. Good thing I'm her attorney, I believe that's the word in English, I have control over her finances, and I'm proud to say I never bought any of it. We fought a lot about it. To solve this, I installed Adblock on her cell phone, and these problems ended for some time, but a friend of hers started sending her links to recipe and religious videos on Facebook some time ago, and my mother doesn't use Facebook, doesn't know Facebook, and doesn't even know how it works. And now that I realized that this is where she had accessed those advertisements for miracle medicines again, and we had started fighting because of it, and today she accused this friend of sending her the adult entertainment. The reason for this is that the ad block doesn't work on Facebook, and my mother learned how to navigate it on her own. She found a naughty ad, and since she clicks on everything, she clicked on this and watched it. I told her my theory, but she still doesn't believe she clicked to watch it, because why would she do it? I repeated that she had not committed any crime, and asked her to never open any link that had Facebook written at the beginning. Why that? Because she doesn't know how to use any technology, she doesn't want to learn how to use it, and opening links from friends with videos as as far as she's willing to go. She agreed and I thought this issue was done. Minutes later, 
I heard her sending a voice message to her friend talking about what happened and ended up saying that they could be arrested and I went to talk to her afterwards, not so calmly. This situation is impossible to stay calm, by God. I told her that everyone watched that kind of stuff and I illustrated it with a cousin of mine who she considers to be an exemplary man and who works with computers and who I found a bottle of moisturizer and paper towel next to his computer and who has not yet been arrested since what he did with it is not a crime. I made her repeat that she didn't commit any crime and I insisted on it until she said so. Then another trauma appeared. I had forgotten that she had police trauma. She had some experiences in her childhood that made her terrified of being around police officers. She told me some stories that I already knew, some new ones, and the idea that the same thing could happen to her that happened to her coworker is something that's engraved on her and she's scared of a cop showing up at our door. What I want to know is, is there an app to stop someone from accessing Facebook on their cell phone? Does anyone know of a good parental control app to install on her phone? Because I think this is what will solve this problem. She already has enough problems in her life, and it's easier to protect her from adult entertainment than to deal with this trauma and therapy. She's currently sleeping because this visit to the church with the prayer group was too much for their pain. She took pain medication, I used a massager for the last 15 minutes on her, and she went to sleep to see if she would forget about the pain. The level of her issue is that any type of medication no longer fully works. Nothing takes away her pain. Opioids are not commonly prescribed here, so she's not an addict, but she uses a non-addictive and very expensive medication, and the amount she uses must be just a little below the lethal amount. She can't leave the house much. She went to therapy for some time, but her disposition made her have to prioritize what was most important to her, and between physiotherapy and psychotherapy, it's obvious which one she'll choose. If anyone has good apps for free, recommend them to me, and thank you for advising me. Just having someone to talk to in these moments helps a lot. Edit, thinking about it, it doesn't make sense for her to want to turn herself over to the police if she has trauma from the police. Obviously, she has these preconceptions and she's pretty darn afraid of what's going on. I mean, the most important thing here is it's clear she just doesn't really understand much of anything that's going on. Personally, I don't know any apps like that myself, but I'm sure there has to be something out there. I haven't really looked around for those kinds of things, but maybe phones nowadays have parental controls kind of built into them, do they not? Our next story is, my friend dropped me because of the FNAF movie. A few weeks ago, my friend and female 17, I, went to the Five Nights at Freddy's movie and it ended with our friendship ending. A little background on our friendship, we both lived in the same city and had a mutual friend. I was a little skeptic at first because he was into that kind of edgy humor you would expect many teenagers to have. I didn't like that, but he told me that he only does this so he can keep having a friend group and not end up alone. And I stupidly believed the it's peer pressure story because I'm a little naive. He painted himself as a very leftist and even communist, so I tried to shrug it off. I invited him to watch the Five Nights at Freddy's movie with me and he agreed to go. I've been a huge FNAF fan for years and got very excited about the little references to the game, like certain characters. I told him every time an important lore detail was on screen, since he didn't know a lot about Five Nights at Freddy's, and I just got overtaken by my joy. I slept at his place that day because it was too late to take the train back home. We had a great time before and after the movie, watching YouTube videos and chatting about things like anime. The next day, he told me he couldn't sleep because the movie deeply disturbed him. I couldn't quite understand that because he never expressed a dislike for horror before. Quite the opposite. But we just called it a day and I went home. The next week, we didn't really talk because we were both busy with work and school, so I ended up texting him and asking how he's doing. He ended up sending me a 5 minute voice message saying he didn't want to talk to me or meet up anymore since he was disturbed by my excitement over the movie. He even framed it like, I enjoyed seeing people get slaughtered which was quite laughable. It's a movie about a game that greatly impacted my teenage years. Of course seeing deaths relevant to the lore was interesting. They were literally the plot. What disturbed me even more than that was the fact that he admitted that he actually lied to me and was not peer pressured into that edgy humor whatsoever. He deliberately hid it from me because he knew I disliked it. He told me that, you have to joke about stuff tragedies, you can't take everything too seriously. And I was very disgusted by that. Another point he brought up to reason why he didn't want to be friends was simply because he smokes and I dislike smoking. I grew up in a home with smokers. 
He told me he had just realized a lot of stuff about me and thought I was scary. At the end of the message, he asked me that he doesn't know if we can fix that issue, but we could try if I want to. Yes, he really expected me to want to be friends after this. I told him to leave me alone and blocked him everywhere. This whole event has greatly damaged my self-esteem. I'm neurodivergent and chronically mentally ill, and I admit that sometimes I am hard to deal with. I have strong interests others might perceive as cringe, and I've always felt like an outsider in school and social events since I couldn't really partake in conversation with my peers. I don't have any interesting talents, and I don't do sport. I've been judged by people for things like collecting dead bugs and preserving them, I'm interested in entomology, and collecting items specifically relating to franchises like Hello Kitty and Pokemon. Getting called creepy or weird has always hurt me and being lied to sealed the deal. I don't know how to make genuine friends anymore. 100% this was a gross overreaction from him. Maybe he finds it weird that you were so excited and giddy about this movie and plot events, but if they can't get into the frame of mind and understanding that it was a game you played, that especially if you started with the first one that had a little less lore behind it, and you followed it all through your teenage years where this lore continued to be revealed, and you see those things that happened translated to the movie screen, you could understand why that would make somebody giddy even if it's a horror back background. This guy assumed so hard about OP and flipped on them so hard it's not even worth OP's time. Somebody that comes to their own assumptions without even giving you a chance? Essentially poo-pooing all over you and their depiction of you as a character and then saying, but we could try to fix it if you want, definitely makes you want to hold up your hand and give them the middle chica. Our next story is, my boyfriend cheated on me while I'm pregnant. I, 25 year old female, and my boyfriend, 24 year old male, are together for a year and a half living together for six months. Right after we find out I was pregnant, our relationship suffered a lot because of my anxiety. We had a lot of fights and he said a lot of hurtful things to me, including that he wouldn't marry me anymore. We had a lot of conversation about it before living together and agreed that if I ever end up pregnant, we would marry and build a family. And out of anger and frustration after he said he wouldn't, I asked him to get out of the house and he did. I went through a lot after that and I was scared of having to take care of one more child alone since I already have a son of my own. I told him that I would end the pregnancy and he was completely against it but didn't want to do anything to help me. My mom was the only one that stayed by my side and told me to move in with her in another state and so I did. Me and my boyfriend continued talking and I gave up on ending the pregnancy. We agreed on a child support and I was in peace with having another child. After a while, he texted me about wanting to give a chance to our family, about marriage, and he said he would come over so we could start a new life in a new place. I was so happy that everything was working out. I found an apartment for us, and we were only waiting for it to get finished so he could come over since my mom didn't like him anymore and did not want him and did not want to host him in her house. We continue our relationship on distance. Everything was great, we were both happy with the pregnancy now, and he asked about every doctor appointment and every exam. He was very excited. Two days ago, he called me and told me that he was missing hooking up and went after a prostitute, that he felt horrible about it and was scared that now he had really ruined everything we planned. He asked for forgiveness a lot of times now. I only listened to everything he had to say, asked a few questions about how it happened, and told him I didn't know what to do about it and had to think. I really wanted a family with him and I'm so confused now. Don't know what to do with this. I just can't believe he did that while I'm pregnant. I think this guy is pretty self-centered and rash with his decisions and I think it might be for the best that OP keeps their distance. I just see what he did here and his history with OP and I just see more heartbreak written all over that if they even consider giving them a third chance. Our next story is, it's all making sense now, mother-in-law is a mistress. I think my mother-in-law is a mistress. I know she's been dating the same man since before my husband and I met 18 years ago, and I know this man still lives with his wife, though I have been told they are separated and he lives in the basement. I thought it was weird, but whatever works for them. I'm buying a house right now. My real estate agent used to be friends with my husband's mom and dad back when they were still married. She asked me today if my mom was still with her boyfriend. I said yes, of course. She said she'd seen the boyfriend walking his dog recently with his wife hand in hand around the local pond. She was hinting at asking me what was going on. I said I have no idea and changed the topic as I didn't want to gossip. I did bring this up to my husband though. He doesn't really want it to discuss either. 
He has always been upset that this man doesn't treat his mom very well. He will never be there for her completely, physically, mentally, financially, etc. Now, to know she might be a mistress, I think it's all hit him a bit different. No one wants to think that of their mom. He questions why she makes such bad decisions in other areas of life as well. We keep wondering, does she even know? Or could he be deceiving both these women in towns right next to each other for all these years? Do I tell his mom what I heard? I feel like she might shoot the messenger for sure. I also feel like she must already know. He still lives with his wife for freak's sake, and she has accepted that all these years. Another thing, my husband's mom left his dad for this man. This man is super rich while my husband's mom struggles financially. He buys her nice things occasionally, but her house is falling apart and he lives in a beautiful mansion. However, they only ever hang out at her house or go on day trips to other places. They go to church together, but it's a church out of town. They were kicked out of the local church, mom said she didn't like them there. He's getting older and has been coming around less often. She now wants to hang out with us more. I'm feeling like we, her family, come second to her affair partner. She signs our kids cards as from her and this man. My kids don't know who he is and are starting to ask. I don't know how to explain. No, that's not grandpa. That's grandma's married partner we see once every other year or so. I don't agree with this situation, but it's not really my place to bring it up. It bothers me perhaps more than it should. Do I just slowly disengage from her and the whole situation? I just think this is so far removed from anything that's appropriate for OP to breach, bring up, discuss. I think there's only going to be even greater earthquakes if OP's trying to broach this topic. Chances are, she probably already knows, but either way, you probably should just learn to be okay with not truly knowing. Our next story is, my boyfriend asked me to do kegels so that he could finish during. I, 39-year-old female, started dating a guy, 44-year-old male, four months ago. He is great in many ways, and the first person I've been with since in a year. I have one kid from a previous relationship. Since we started hooking up, I've noticed he almost always doesn't finish, which leaves me feeling hurt and defeated as I'm dealing with insecurities over my mom body. It feels like I'm not enough, and if I were a better lover, he would. One day during, he asked me to start doing kegels so that he could finish more often. What gets me is that he's admitted that he does solo stuff daily to watching adult entertainment and that's how he finishes, so I'm feeling very resentful because it seems like he's externalizing his own problem, i.e. dependency on adult entertainment solo stuff, on me and claiming that my body is the problem. It has gotten to the point that I'm filled with sadness over my own body and I don't know how to bring any of this up with him without making him feel like crap. What should I do? I mean, unless they admit they have an addiction and they're willing to work on it, I don't think you're really going to make much headway here. I think probably you're going to get a lot of pushback if you bring it up. I think you can try it and you can hope that they would be open to it and try to work on it and improve, but they're going to have to want to. Our next story is, my 29-year-old male, boyfriend, 43-year-old male, kept leading me on for years and not proposing, and now my mom, 52-year-old female, died and will never be at my wedding. I loved my boyfriend so much, so I was always deeply hurt by the fact that he didn't want to be married to me. He was always avoiding the conversations, saying empty nonsense like, I'm not opposed to being married to you one day, etc., but refused to have any concrete plans. It always made me feel worthless and rejected. My mother died five days ago, way, way, way too early, months before turning 53. She was the heart of our family. We were all so attached to her and loved her deeply. My father had a very rough life, full of tragedy, and I at least hoped he would get to grow old with the love of his life, but he won't. She died of breast cancer, and the last months were rough. The sight of my dad hugging her coffin the morning after she died, crying and saying, nothing hurts you today, is that right my love? will be engraved in my mind forever. I'm also very worried for my younger brother and would take all the pain upon myself just to spare him, but I can't. In this whole chaos, one thing that I can't get off of my mind is that my mother won't be there at my wedding. I feel envy for everyone who had their moms at theirs. I was always asking her on advice about anything and she helped me with everything. My boyfriend finally said we can get married in a year after my official mourning period is over. I don't know if I can even trust him on that, even though, to be fair, this is the first time he's specified time. However, I'm full of anger and resentment towards him. I just wanted a happy, normal wedding. I wanted to feel wanted and chosen and to celebrate our love with those close to us. 
Now, instead of it, if I ever do get married, it'll be incredibly sad without my mom. On top of everything he says, he wants to have children soon after getting married. And it makes me feel like he's using my body for reproduction without paying me any respect. I try to talk to him, but he refuses to even acknowledge how much I lost by not having the chance to have my mom at my wedding. There is no way to get through to him. He just rejects the topic. He otherwise says he loves me. I love him too, but this anger is killing me. What do I do? Do I leave him and try to love someone else one day when I heal? Otherwise, how do I go on in life with someone who has zero interest in what I want and how I feel? I think him not even being able to have the discussions and him being sealed off on talking about any of this stuff, valuing your feelings, that alone should probably be a pretty clear sign not to even want to marry this person. I mean, for all intents and purposes, he's expressed that he didn't want to marry you for all this time, and what, is offering it now as a consolation prize? This next story is, my family expects me to spend thousands on travel every year, but no one visits me. I, 36-year-old female, have a family who all lives in different states. For holidays, it's always my brother, 40-year-old male, who hosts. If I'm going to see my immediate family, I have to travel to them. In my entire life, no one has once paid to come visit me. Even when I lived 30-minute drive from my mom, 64-year-old female, she didn't come visit because she didn't like my city. The expectation my whole life is to go to other people. I couldn't make Thanksgiving because I couldn't afford the trip. It would have cost me $700, flight and Uber, no one wants to pick me up from the airport. My cousin, 25-year-old male, passed away a few months ago when I wanted to make his funeral, but it would have been a $1,000 trip, flights and hotels included. Now, to see my sister, 45-year-old female, it's an $800 flight for Christmas and New Year. She's offering to pay half, first time this has happened, but it's still an expensive trip. I'm single and have no one to share expenses with. I work really hard to support myself, but feel like I'm drowning in the financial expectations my family has of me. Maybe because this has been going on so long they just expect me to go? If I don't, I'd never see anyone. It breaks my heart knowing my whole family is together for holidays and I am alone. I feel taken for granted and unimportant. How do I handle this moving forward? I've expressed myself before, but since everyone's married with kids, No one wants to reciprocate the effort I've put in for 15 years, even when they had a chance while still single. I mean, the bottom line is, financially, if it doesn't make sense for you, you should be okay understanding that it's just not right for you. It definitely sucks that in 15 years, nobody's even tried to help you out at least a little bit. At the same time, I don't think they're obligated to necessarily help you. But at the same time, that makes it more than fair for them to not have any obligation in mind of you being there or being angry that you aren't. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely tricky relationship topic, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.